Today on the Idiot's Guide, we are talking about there is in shape and there's a shape. We all fall into one of these two categories. But what does it take to move from one to the other? I can tell you, one is a lot easier to get into <laughs> than the other is. And everyone loves a good seafaring tale, especially when it involves Brazilian cattle ranchers, 19,000 stinky cows, and a cargo ship in Cape Town, oh. South Africa. I'm your host, Adam Richardson, a.k.a. The Profit Hacker, and I'm joined by the man in charge, Mr. Joe Haslam. Welcome to The Idiot's Guide. Well, today, what I want to um, really get going on is how nervous I am about attacking something that honestly, I don't like talking about. But I find that right now, I've had a lot of conversations about this. Um, I think most people who find it a struggle Okay. And, 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 and I want to be careful about this because there's a, there's a, there's a culture out there right now and whatever you feel about the culture is, is your business, but it's this, you know, I, I heard it said the other day, if I fits, I sits and that I've seen for puppy videos and cat videos, but also very, very plus size people touring locations. And so I'm like, Hmm. Okay, I'm, I'm just, I'm going to reserve nothing. I'm not going to say anything about it. I'm just going to say like, I saw it, I heard it, and I'm just kind of like, okay, neat. That's for puppies and kittens. Not necessarily your statement, but okay, whatever. <clears throat> for me, I have a problem with how I feel about myself as far as physically. And it's not necessarily like, man, I'm just... I'm, I'm, I'm like shaming myself at home and, you know, or that I'm beating myself up, but I know I am not in good shape. I am a shape. I am in the category of a shape. You, you've got the perfect dad bod. Right. <laughs> you know, and we had the conversation about, you know, being Hollywood fat, which is a re really weird conversation when I explain that to people, but I'm like Thor fat, you know, fat Thor. He's like, yeah, okay. All right. That's good. <laughs> but lately, like when I go out to places or I interact with anybody, they always they're they always kind of give this like, whoa, you're huge. And I'm like, I don't know how to take that. Like, am I huge like I scare you? Or am I huge like I am obviously out of or you know, out of shape and overweight? Or or is it all of the above? Because <laughs> I feel like it's all of the above, but maybe, maybe it's not. Maybe it's Maybe I am just a, a <laughs> massive thing that I should be shaming at home. But uh, I, needless to say, I, I feel like it's something that I am attentive to. I am aware of it. And it's something that I don't want to stay in. Yeah. And, and to be clear, no one, no one should ever fat shame. Right. That is the worst type of thing for anyone's mental health. And the reason is because you have no idea why that person is overweight. Yeah. There may be legitimate reasons. There are uh, medical problems that cause people to be overweight. So there is a, uh, a, a tumor. Uh, so I actually, so I've been through a lot of doctors trying to figure out what's going on with my body. We've talked about this a little bit in past podcasts uh, because I am overweight but I try a lot of different things, can't get the weight to go away. Uh, one of the first things they thought were potentially this tumor, and that grows on the adrenal glands, mm -hmm. uh, and it causes people to gain weight significantly. And so someone literally could have cancer, and you're fat shaming them. Right. You don't know there are uh, adrenal problems, there are... Um, uh, thyroid problems. There are a lot of hormonal problems. There are a lot of reasons why people are overweight. It can be genetic. 
So there are genetic components that cause people to be overweight or impacted by environmental factors. So they could eat the same thing as someone else and they are fat and someone else is skinny. Okay, so here's a quick example. When I was younger, I was a very, very skinny individual. Mm -hmm. And I had a friend of mine uh, and we were, we ate a lot of meals together and I ate a lot back then. I had a very good metabolism back then. <laughs> and he actually commented to me, he said, if you, or if I ate the way that you eat, I would blow up like a blimp. If you ate like I eat, you would drift away to nothingness. <laughs> and that's true back then. And I did probably a lot less exercise than I do now. I ate probably a lot worse. Well, no, not probably. I did eat a lot worse back then <laughs> than I do now, but I was very much in shape, thin, you know, good body structure. And so the idea is you don't know what's causing it. So never, ever fat shame because right. that's just, that just shows what kind of person you are. Is it fair to self-deprecate? To a degree. <laughs> and again, so, so when it comes to self, that's a completely different thing. We should always be striving for self-improvement. I think, you know, I, I, I guess it, it, it isn't fair because if I want to communicate a message, I don't want that message to be go home and shame yourself. Right. No. You know, so, you know, it, it, even if it's you getting on yourself, we have so many motivators out there for self-image, body image that are false, that are lies, mm -hmm. that, that hurt people. And, and taking that and carrying it home and holding it as some gross standard against yourself is abusive. And that is... That's what we're talking about. So, so yeah, it's, technically, to answer my own question, yes, it's bad. It's, yeah, it's, it is. It's wrong. It, to, it's self abuse when you shame yourself into thinking that you are bad. You are in in you are not fulfilling society's view of what you should be. Now, there is a degree here because there's a point where you can get lazy about self improvement. You know, the whole idea behind the idiot's guide is we've been through the mistakes, we've been down the road, and hopefully helping other people not make the same mistakes we have. And so learning and self-improving and and making oneself better is the process of life. And so we should never shame ourselves that we're we're bad or not keeping up with someone else or someone else's image of what we should be. But we should always be self-improving. And, and there is, there's a fine line between that, but it's very important that we stay on the line of self-improvement and not self-shame. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to, I, 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 like, there are a thousand different directions you can go with this. We can talk about what you eat, how, you know, what, you know, kind of what, what's the best diet? What's the kind of supplement you should take? Who, who should you follow? Um, you know, what kind of restrictions should you do? Carnivore diet, vegetarian diet, Mediterranean diet, Atkins diet. Okay, so that's all food consumption. But then on the other side of that is, you know, just thinking, okay, well-rounded, stop eating pizza and Twinkies. Okay. Usually a good idea. Right. As long as, you know, honestly, an, an easy way for you to start making a change, go home and cook. It's, it's, it's literally, it starts there. And I know that that's like, okay, well, what if I only know how to cook hamburger helper? Then go home and make that first, because you can also buy turkey meat instead of hamburger uh -huh. beef meat, which will change the dynamic of that meal all in itself. So yes. And if you want vegetables, add a pack of frozen green beans in there. Yes. There's fiber, there's vitamins in there. It's green. You have some stuff. So all of that in just, you know, hamburger helper. And no, I'm not going to say like, please go do this. But <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to say we always put barriers in front of us to try to make it more difficult for us and overcomplicate things. But doing one little simple change like that, where you go instead of eating out over and over and over, go home and cook. 
Well, and one of the big problems with eating out is remember that these restaurants, uh, even packaged foods at the store, they are high in preservatives like sodium. Yep. You, know, you think back, that's how you preserve shit, preserve, preserve food on ships when you had to be on a voyage for six months. You salt packed everything because it preserves the food. It also makes it taste better, which was an extra plus. Yeah. But by salting it, you preserved it. And so we use those same practices today. That's why when you open up your can of corn or green beans, it's high in sodium. Drain it, rinse it so that you get rid of a lot of that extra salt. It's just a preservative. That's what it's there for. And so that's why it's so high in everything that we eat when we eat out. Yeah. And sodium, I mean, that is one of the biggest problems that we have today is we are consuming so much sodium that a lot of the weight that a lot of people have isn't necessarily fat, it's water weight. Yes. And so the body is absorbing all this extra water in order to keep a balance because that's how it works. You have to have that water-sodium balance uh, within the body. And so it has to drink all that water. That's why you're always extra thirsty uh, after eating out. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that's the problem with eating out is it's not necessarily that they're out there to make it unhealthy. It's because the foods, they're making food for hundreds of people every night (laughs) and they're ordering food, not that day. They ordered food three days ago in order to have the stock for today. And it has to be preserved Yeah, by eating foods at home, by, by growing your own vegetables, things like that. If you can, great. You're reducing the amount of those preservatives in it. And you know where that food came from. You can eat it fresh. Now we can't all do that. I don't do that, but I get as close to fresh as possible. And I rinse my food. I eat canned corn. That's part of my everyday dinner is a cup of canned corn and I rinse it. I get the no salt added. It still has a little bit of salt, Um, but it's looking out for those things and just being aware by cooking at home. You're saving yourself money. You're saving yourself uh, on the nutrition side of it. Yeah. It takes more time, but with a little bit of planning and go back a couple episodes Uh, You'll see how much time you have. Yeah, no, there's plenty of time <laughs> in a week to prepare meals in advance. So that's what I do. I, I prepare an entire week's worth of meals in advance. Yeah. And so I have my little to-go containers. I bring, <clears throat> so I do salads for lunch every day. I, I make myself a very nice chicken Caesar salad for lunch every day. Uh, and... I put them in my little to-go boxes and I bring my six salads and put them in the fridge here at the office (laughs) and I eat my salad. Friday's lettuce is a little sad, but that's okay. (laughs) Not if you get it, not, not if you get the right kind. So, all right. So I, I wanted to, you know, like, because there's so many choices, because there's so many directions that we could go with this, I wanted to zero in on something that doesn't have a cost, but is a tremendous resource. And I've been using it for a number of years. I know, I know you're going to say like, you have really, you've really been using it. I was like, okay, quite a few years ago. Well, I would probably say back during quarantine time, (laughs) I had nothing better to do than to be at home and work on working out. So doing, you know, had a body yoga mat and I was out in the backyard, not doing yoga, but using it to do these exercises. And the website's called darebee.com. And it's uh, D-A-R-E-B-E-E.com. They are not a sponsor. It's just someone that we've used or Adam's used uh, that he feels strongly about. So this is not a sponsor, but he has personally used this site. So their, their apps are antiquated. So don't, don't, uh, bet on an app that you're going to be able to use. However, their website is mobile optimized. So it doesn't matter. Even if you go to their website, you can get everything that they have their entire library. You have access to it. It's free. It is overwhelming how much information is there, but it's really easy to be able to go through and kind of search out what you're looking for. And let me give you kind of an idea. If I go to workouts and I just collect or select workouts, there is 2,200 different workout programs that you can look through to just You can browse them, you can open them up, and if something stands out to you, you download the PDF and you can have it on your phone 
just as a doc. You can put it as your home screen so that you can look at your workout every day and it remind you of what you want to do. Or when you're looking at your phone, instead of looking at Instagram for the next reel you're going to post while you're flexing in the gym, you know, you are looking at a workout program that's going to walk you through your health. The other part of it is another area that's called library, like, like it's libraries basically, or, um, let me see here. The collections I think is where it is. Nope. It's not. Anyway, um, it's somewhere on there. Essentially, it's uh, okay. So 150 plus guides in the database. This is different guides uh, for different situations, how to improve grip strength, how to breathe correctly during exercise, how to stay healthier longer, you know, like all sorts of different things. But one of them that stands out to me because it is me is how to start with exercise if you're overweight. Now, I exercise. I I, I do. I, I train jujitsu, but it's been probably about two months since I've been to training. One of the reasons why is because I am overweight. If I train jujitsu, I am too big and I... So essentially, there's form to what you do in jujitsu. If... If all I am is just big and large, the only option I have is smash and they die, you know? (laughs) So I don't want to hurt anybody. I am big enough to where everyone that I go against, even the black belts, potentially get injured because of my size. And so I have to be really careful, which means I'm putting undue stress on myself to make sure I'm supporting myself, which means I'm not doing the correct form when I'm doing the... uh, the, the, the strategy that I'm doing or technique that I'm working on. And so I'm always compensating, which offsets my, my actual training. It's hurting me. As in the long run, I'm going to either injure myself or if I let go and use my own strength, I'm going to injure somebody else. So that being said, I need to lose weight. But it's really, really difficult. How do you get started how you like, even with jujitsu, it's easy because they do a little bit of warm up. I get out of breath and I know I'm out of shape because <laughs> I can't even do the little warm up without dying. And so here's a couple of things, reasons, reasons why exercise is so difficult when we haven't actively engaged in anything physically in a while. And the first one is new change in routine makes a greater demand in the body's energy needs and the body resists it. Okay. Number two is getting into exercise after a long layoff or as a newbie is initially hard on the joints, heart, the lungs, everything. I have athletic induced asthma. If I started working out, guess what goes away? The athletic induced asthma. (laughs) That's weird. If I do the athletics, I actually lose the asthma. Weird. Okay. Number three, the central nervous system is not yet used to controlling the body in new ways of movement. Uh, number four, the, me- the metabolic system has not yet geared up to increase thermogenesis or thermogenesis, thermogenesis, thermogenesis at the rate required when you exercise. And then the last one is the joints, tendons, and ligaments are de-strengthened because of a period of inactivity, and they will experience significant mechanical stress once you start to exercise. All of those things spell discomfort. You can't even sleep at night because it hurts so bad. So all of that factored in when you try to just jump in and say, I'm going to take charge of this is, is all stacked against you. So that's not to say that it's impossible. It's just to say, how do we get going in a way that continues to keep this stuff in mind and keep us safe through the process. Yeah. And safe is really important throughout this whole process Yeah, because, um, again, I hear a lot of times, again, being overweight, we both hear a lot of comments, uh, about our weight, even though we're actually pretty healthy. I think I'm a little bit healthier overall than you are. Um, you know, when you're talking about, you know, things like blood pressure, overall heart, physical body health, all those kinds of things. I got a lot of extra fat, but overall health. Um, but we hear a lot of things that we're making excuses 
Mm-hmm. You know, that, oh, you, you get pain, well, that's just an excuse. No, it's not. It's a reason. Now, I've got things, I've got a bad knee, I've got bad shoulders, so I've actually got uh, uh, bone spurs in my shoulders. Uh, I've got osteoarthritis. I got lots of problems that make it very difficult for me to find exercises that are going to be for my benefit Mm -hmm. that won't cause actual harm to my body. If I go try and run, it's actually going to cause physical harm to my body. Right now, if I get up in the morning and go down the stairs walking, it hurts. (laughs) I have, I, I, I hurt my, like, I can't remember what's, what's a plantar fasciitis, the tendon oh, underneath. Okay. So your plant, your plantar fascia or whatever it is, is the name of the tendons that go underneath your heel. Mm-hmm. Something happened about a year ish ago. And because of the weight gain, I can't, I can't get through it. So it is always hurting. If I sit at my desk for too long and I get up and I'm like, just got to go to the bathroom. I'm like, Oh, ow, uh, uh. so like running is not an option. Yeah. So. And, and one thing I, I, I was looking for this, I was trying to find what is something online that showed the difference. What is a reason? What is an excuse? And I found a really good, uh, blog post. Uh, it's Leah genders fitness. Uh, so, uh, I think her name is Leah genders, uh, is mm-hmm. the one that does the, um, uh, site. It's her fitness studio site, whatnot. Uh, and she actually did a really good blog on, the difference between reason and excuse. And and that's really important because when we talk about our problems, these are not excuses. These aren't saying, oh, we give up. These are reasons why certain exercises don't work, why we can't do certain things. And one of the important things, so she talks about, um, it, it's, so this is directly from her, so I'm just gonna read it. Excuses generally cast blame on someone or something else, and they exist to make us feel better about not following through with commu- commitments. Excuses quiet a guilty mind and save save face. It's not my fault. Mm-hmm. Reasons allow us to reflect, reassess, and adjust our actions or goals. We take full responsibility with a proactive approach to making necessary changes to keep moving forward. I missed a workout, but I will make these adjustments so that I don't encounter this obstacle as often Uh, excuses happen when we miss and let ourselves off the hook but reasons give us the information we need to adjust our training for a better outcome in the future an excuse i missed missed my workout because i worked late a reason i missed my work my training because i had to work late but i will plan my activities in the morning next week so i know i will get my exercise in even if i work late And that's a big thing is we each have a lot of challenges. Mm -hmm. So I do want you to talk about some of the mental health challenges that you've had um, over the last little while, not in detail, but just how it relates to physical health and getting the exercise going. I think for Um, me, but for, for me, it's the physicality. Yeah. You know, there are some things I physically can't do. I can't run. I can't walk. Uh, I can't do high impact exercises. I used to play soccer. I used to play baseball. I used to play volleyball. All those things that I love that actually, as you hear me say those things, you can think about every one of the injuries I have uh, somehow (laughs) go back to one of those. Um, But I can't do those anymore because of whatever injury I have now. But there are other things I can do. I can get a stationary bike, which I have one. I actually have a stationary bike here at the office. Uh, that I jump on every now and then. I can go swimming. Uh, that's a little difficult for me because swimming requires you to go to a public place where there are a whole bunch of people staring at you while you are 90% naked. Whoever thought public <laughs> swimming pools were a good idea, I don't know who they were. But you just need one of those like propelled lap pools, the little ones that are just like you're doing laps, but it's a jet that's yeah, pushing oh no. against you resistance wise. Like, yeah. Like a treadmill for swimming, yeah. you know? So yeah, so there are things that I can do which I have adapted my exercise routines for. Now, even with that, I can't get a lot of exercise in. So I mitigate that by being very strict about my diet, yeah, about watching what I take in. My fat content, uh, I eat about 25% of what the normal person uh, consumes for, or what the daily recommended value for fat consumption is. Because I have to be very careful about what I take in. 
And so these are reasons for why I can't do what I would like to do. They are not excuses. And again, there are a lot of people that see, we talk about the reason why, and they think we're making up excuses. They are not excuses. And make sure you're not excusing yourself out of doing exercise, but find ways you know, this uh, do be is a derby derby yeah. is a great resource because it gives you a lot of those options to find other routes, other ways, other things that you can do when you've got limitations. Yeah. The, the page that I mentioned was, you know, there's there's twenty two hundred plus on, on the workouts page. Then the programs where there's high intensity workouts, there's 30 day programs that you can do where you do a push up challenge or a pull up challenge or whatever it is. There's all these challenges you can do. There's low and in, low impact, uh, training. So, so there's hit workouts, there's lit workouts, there's recovery workouts, all sorts of different things geared toward anybody who is looking to be physically active. <laughs> that is it. Yeah. And, and so I love the resource because it's like walking into every, every physical training program that's out there that everyone's like for this much month, a month, you can, you can join my shredded club and you can do be as ripped as I can. And I was like, <laughs> bro, I've never looked like that. Like ever, ever in my life. Like, and you're care. former military. I prior service military. And I have been in excellent shape and never looked as dumb as you do. Okay. So, but I, you know, like I don't, I don't get liposuction and freaking model body crap. And, you know, I don't take any supplements. I know that, you know, doing freaking dips and push ups and sit ups with a, with a weight on my chest was what made me get so cut those three freaking workouts. That was it for six months. And I was a, a beast. That's, that's easy. So, you know, I, I like it, it's, it's, I'm not saying that you should do that. Yeah. Please don't. But, it, but the idea is that it, it doesn't take such a complicated strategy to, to really just get, get a grip of this. And one of the things that I, I would say is that, you know, to, to kind of answer your question about some of the, some, the mental stuff and over the last year has really contributed to my dramatic increase in weight. Okay. Um, you know, you get to the point where I am, I would say that probably I'm an emotional eater. I'm sure that there are people who can (laughs) attest to that. Why? You know, rather than me go drink my feelings away or take some kind of a influential, you know, something drug or whatever it is, or go and, you know, pick up some other habit or punch a wall and break and increase my medical expenses. You know, I, there has been a lot of things that have come my way and to my family and have really, really impacted how the last year has, you know, mentally impacted to the point where, you know, both, you know, both my wife and I have been on, been on watch because we have considered finishing it. And, you know, that's, that's a terrible thing to, to even to admit to, but it's something that I can say, you know, we are through, we are, we are through that, but it's something that we we're not proud of having to deal with that struggle. Well, a lot of the emotional side of this, the way that we were seeking comfort is through food. And I'm a foodie. I'm not, I don't like necessarily like sweets, so I'm not going to go get a cake. My wife would, but me, I'm like, dude, a big giant bowl of pasta and I am in heaven, you know? And it's, it's not necessarily terrible for me, but it's bad for me. So especially if that's where I go so continuously feeling like I don't have an outlet anywhere else. Yeah, and I think one of the big differences with you is you sought the help. Yes. And you got help from a mental health practitioner. You yep. you got the resources. And and that's an important thing. And then now you're on the other end of it. Obviously, it's not in you're cured. There's no right. such thing as cured for mental health. It's a continuing thing that all of us face regularly. We all have issues with one struggle or another. 
And I guess, um, you know, why would we why would we say this and, and communicate this? I meant to say this at the very beginning. It's because we want to bring our listeners along with the challenge that we are going to tackle this and do this. And as a, as a team, this is something that we 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 plan on this being something that we are communicating regularly about about our progress. And, you know, we hope that if you gain and become a subscriber that you might want to give us some constructive criticism and rag on us about all the stupid people out there selling their packages. And I'm like, well, I get it all for free. So (laughs) shut your face. Uh (laughs) But yeah, I mean, just talking about, you know, we're going to be going through this. We, We are making a commitment to lose weight. Hopefully it works. You know, it may not. You know, my weight could be hormonal. It could be a lot of different things. Yeah. And so I may not lose any. Well, we'll figure it out. (laughs) But we're going to go through all this so that you can see, you can see through our challenges, through what we're going through, so that hopefully that encourages you a little bit more, as well as to bring it back to that mental health side. If you are fat shaming someone, think about if that person is eating their feelings, which is not good. But if that's the reason that they are overweight, think about all the added hate that you're putting on them by fat shaming them. They're already going through the worst period of their life. And now you're adding on to that. Well, and and to say mental health wise, I, I can attest that oftentimes... I am going to be my biggest enemy. Mm -hmm. And so I don't need your help. Exactly. And so those of you, if you're struggling with overweight for whatever the reason, if it's it's hormonal, if it's uh, mental health related, if it is uh, injury related, whatever the reasons, there are ways to be able to work through that Mm -hmm. and make sure that you don't ever feel put down upon by someone else who shames you because coming from two overweight guys sitting at a table right here, right now, (laughs) you are valuable. You you honestly, just, just for the fact that you are interested, you're, you're looking, you're thinking about ways to improve yourself. That's amazing. Yeah. You know, I, I would say that, you know, it's, it's, it takes a tremendous amount of courage just to stay in that space. Because like for me, like it's, it's, it, all of these things, like you talked about, they're not necessarily excuses, but feeling like I've got odds stacked against me. I didn't know where to go and I didn't have the time or headspace to even motivate myself to get out of bed, to go do something with it. And so I am where I am right now. Now I feel a lot better, but I still struggle with stuff. Yeah. And I, I, I don't, I don't physically feel better. So now it's going, okay, I got to change all this. I've had lots of doctor appointments over the last little bit, and it has come back to a common denominator that is obvious and depressing. And it's the only thing that I can do because I have all of these things that I'm going to the doctor saying, I'm struggling with this and this and this and this and this and this, and, this. and they go, you know, if you just lost some weight, probably 90% of that would go away. And I'm like, I hate you, but you're right. <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it's yeah. so hard. Like they're not fat shaming. They're being as honest as they can, caring about my health, having other people come like my, my jujitsu professor. Like he came to me a while back and he goes, he goes, he goes, we're going to go, we're going to put you on the don't die diet. Like all the things that you talk about and you're dealing with and you're increasing weight and all that stuff. Like, I don't want you to die. I want you to be here for your kids. Yeah. And, and to be clear, I mean, that is legitimate. There are certain situations where it is, if you lose weight, then you're good. There were, when I first started going to doctors, when I had a lot of the weight gain, it was kind of the first impression. Okay. Let's talk about maybe some of the environmental factors for why you're overweight, you know, what do you eat? What do you exercise? You know, all this, once they ruled that out and know that I exercise as much as I am physically possible, I eat very well. Then we started looking into other possible reasons. Mm -hmm. And that's what a doctor is there for is they're not just going to fat shame you. Now, some of them will find a new doctor, 
But uh, yes, you're right. Yeah. Uh, but <coughs> they are there. And if there is a legitimate reason for it, they will help you find it. And honestly, if I went and used my insurance and talked to a specialist in the medical field, I'm sure I could find somebody who isn't as blatantly obvious and would do what I'm trying to accomplish in a simp- in, in, in an easier road, more expensive, but easier road. I'm a combat veteran. I have VA health care. That is where I get my health care. Yes, I have health insurance. I don't use it for myself because I have VA health care. So when I'm talking to a veteran doctor who's been there for 30 years and, you know, he his bedside manner is probably not the nicest. But one of the things he's like, yeah, we could do this. We could go down this road. We could do the surgery. But I guarantee you, you're going to get to the surgeon's table and that surgeon will not operate on you. Yeah. And, and that was... That was a hard statement to hear, to go like, I did that to myself. And and I want to clear up something that I just said, uh, that if you go to a doctor and there's a legitimate reason, I, I'm i not saying that they're being overweight because of mental health or overeating or any other things are not legitimate reasons. Right. I, I just want to be clear. I'm using, I, my, I my, used my a com- feelings were hurt. Yeah. I used a common vernacular there and I apologize. <laughs> uh, I meant to say a medical reason. If there is a medical reason for you being overweight. Yeah. And, and the I medical mean, reason be a way could that be you depression. metabolize how you, you have certain things in your body, organs, tissue that isn't working the right way. Right. All of those different things can contribute to that in, in different ways. And so, yes, seeking that medical professional help gives you that perspective to be able to weigh that part of it as well. Yeah. So as part of this, anyone who, who listens to this, watches this on YouTube, put in the comments what your journey has been. We, we legitimately want to hear this because we want to encourage you uh, as well as on future episodes of the podcast we want to talk about what people have been through because we're starting this journey right now. Now we've been through some of these things with, with doctors. We know some of the reasons for why we're overweight, but we are going to be putting in a lot of extra effort to lose those extra pounds. Right. And so we want to hear from our listeners, from our subscribers, what have you been through? What have you tried? What has not worked for you? Where are you at on your journey? Because we want to be that support for you and we want you to be that support for us. Yeah. Because we are a community of idiots <laughs> who are moving forward to improve ourselves every day and just get that step closer. So if you haven't exercised in a while or you have an injury or you are just getting started and you have some weight challenges ahead of you. One of the biggest things to hear to to basically to, to begin this is start small. A lot of times the biggest injuries happen because we do too much too soon. And it's not saying that you, you don't have to, you know, like it, you have to start. It's start small. Um, one of the things it talks about is fat is stored in the body as a metabolically active organ, which means that you are fighting not just this, oh, I'm a you know fat burning machine. No, your body is feeding that giant consuming thing, however much weight you have. So it's what you consume as far as food. It pictures your mind and your body sees that as an organ that it needs to continue to feed. So everything it's doing is trying to keep it alive. Well, that's counterproductive to try to lose it if you want that organ to go away. So not not saying that fat is an organ, but it acts like an organ metabolically. So that means that digestively, all all the nutrients that you're doing, it's going to throw it at all that stuff because it's going to try to disperse it to everything in your body, which means your fat cells are taking from the nutrients that your other organs are going to do, which means your organs are depleted of the right nutrients it needs and your health deteriorates. And so again, there are a lot of factors that hurt this. The biggest thing, there's three of them. Okay. This is number one is consistency. Consistency is you need to do something that gets you active every day. 
if that means, and, 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 you know, on Derby, one of the things that's on Derby.com is, um, and again, they're not a sponsor. I just love them because I've been using them and they're free. <laughs> so why not? Okay. And this is a great hack. This is a fitness hack that blows everybody else out of the water. So, you know, one through five, everything's scaled on a one through five. So one being like standing there breathing. Okay to like basic walking patterns. There's there's a 30-day walking challenge that is level one. That is it. But you also have walking challenges that are level five. And that's more like rucking challenges where you're carrying a bag of boulders <laughs> with you. But but the idea is, is like all of these things are, are in derby.com. And so it's something worth looking at. Be consistent. Do something active every single day. Choose consistency. The second one is structure. Know what you're going to do. What do you, what, you know, what you do needs to provide enough variety to make each day interesting and progression to gradually challenge and change your body. So if, if, you know, I went, let's say we're walking. Okay. Walking for me right now, because of my heel, I will pay the price, but I still want to try to some extent. I'll probably try to find something lower impact than walking, but walking is something I have to know how to do pretty consistent, con consistently. So structure wise, I would say, you know, in a walk, I walked three blocks. I went around three blocks today. Maybe I took my dog for a walk with me. Okay. Cause my dog looks like me. So, you know, <coughs> they need it too. <clears throat> Tomorrow, I did four blocks. Finally, I did one big city block. Then two weeks from now, I'm doing, you know, I'm doing a mile and a half. And all I'm doing is walking. But I see more things. I see what's going on. I, I'm walking. It gives me a chance that we're always zipping by in our cars. But going on a walk in our own neighborhood slows down that whole picture. And we start seeing, we're like, wow, I didn't even know there was a playground right there. That's pretty cool. You know? So a great resource for that, for walking. I'm just going to throw this out there. Yeah. Pokemon Go. Okay. I know <laughs> this was true. a craze from years ago. Um, but there's, no. a, there's a Harry Potter one too. Oh, is there? Yep. Okay. Um, but yeah, so uh, years ago we were in, in a different office space uh, that was more conducive to walking around the, um, the parking lot. So I would do, I would take a 15 minute break twice a day and I would just walk around uh, the just the little parking lot of, of our uh, office that we were in. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that's kind of boring just to walk around. So I'd pull up my Pokemon Go. I got teased by my family for having Pokemon on my phone. Um, but I'd have Pokemon Go up and just walking around that little thing, I'd find a couple of different things, a different couple of different Pokemon or uh, things to do. You get your walking counts and things like that. It tracks how far you've gone. So it was kind of a... a a bonus for that to know how far I've actually walked every day. Mm -hmm. uh, but it keeps your mind engaged while you're doing that. And so that's just a fun thing. I mean, see how far you can go, see how far you can go to get those Pokemon. Uh, do some of those fun activities while you're out there walking. Don't just make it a, you know, I'm out here to lose weight or to exercise. Make it fun. Yeah. Make it, make it something engaging. Listen to a podcast. <laughs> I, I know a few, if you want some recommendations. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the third one is patience. Patience is nothing happens overnight, and it is very unrealistic to expect it to. Um, honestly, you're not really going to feel much after two weeks. Mm -hmm. you, might, you might feel physically a little less in pain, but if you're gradually increasing with that structure, you're, you're going to be pushing that no matter when that is. But... Um, basically, I mean, like almost the first day, well, basically you're going to feel different in two weeks from now, but almost from the first day of your activity, it will be at least 12 weeks before you begin to see any meaningful physical changes. And that, you know, if you want to go crazy, hardcore, you can, you can adapt to that. It depends on what you feel like is a, a structure that you can handle and physically you can handle. Because most people, when, when I'm talking about being overweight and not having an exercise structure, 
you're not going to be the dude who's just slamming CrossFit and throwing the ropes around like you're a boss. Like, <laughs> uh, uh, like I did kettlebell one day and I'm like, I'm done. I can't do this for another three years. So <laughs> I, I, I had one trainer. So I've got problems with my right knee. Um, really bad problems. I've been through multiple physical therapists to try to resolve the issues. Um, and I've still continued to have problems with my right knee, but I had one personal trainer that she consistently tried to get me to do, uh, I think it's, uh, lunges where you kind of kneel down and then you get up and then you put the next four foot forward kneeling down Mm -hmm. the stress on my (laughs) knee every single time I tried to tell her, I can't do this. My knee is not going to let me. And she was a young trainer, um, but she she kept trying to push me into putting more and more pressure on my knee, which was against the physical therapist's recommendation. Um, but, you know, so you have to find the right <laughs> trainers as well uh, and just be aware of your limitations. Be aware of them. That's part of being patient is just know that not all exercises are going to work. Mm-hmm. Kettlebells may not be for you. <laughs> Lunges may not be for you. Uh, find ones that work and be patient until you find the ones that are actually going to work for you. And on Derby, it, I mean, it says, when you first start to exercise, find the level that's suitable for you. So you might be able to handle a level two or three. You might not have to start at a level one, but you know, make sure that like test it. And if it, if it's too, too much, too overwhelming, bump it down, you know, Mm -hmm. but the, the, the point is, is to start. And I want to say one of the biggest things that it emphasizes here is be positive. You are freaking rock star. If you are doing this, just thinking about it is makes you that. So, so yeah, like screw the people that are fat shaming (laughs) Like it's that F you fat sort of thing. Let's do that. Okay. And like that, that's, that's what I, I the only fat I'm going to shame is the fat that I'm like, you need to go somewhere else. You don't live here anymore. Okay. <laughs> but it's, it's, it's being positive about it, being positive about how freaking awesome you are for, for even just considering trying to, trying to overcome this and, and trying to figure out ways to improve your health. That's, that's amazing. And and, and, and I like there there's, I'll link this in the show notes, the, this actual article that way you can go through, but there's a list of a couple recommended. There's about seven of them that are recommended like, Hey, you can start here. Hey, you can start here. And again, they're all things that you can open up, save the PDF to your phone and you have that document you can refer to. So better than an app <laughs> because it's right there, you know? <laughs> so <clears throat> You don't have to wait for service or anything like that to get access to it. I, I don't know, whatever. But I like, I like Derby.com because it, it provides so many resources at no cost and, and lots of different directions. And it meets you where you are from, from the, the, I have no experience doing this and I'm scared to, I am just jacked and I've, you know, <laughs> I've got the the best thing, the best workout program ever. And Derby will be like, let's see. <laughs> and and this is not an ad for Derby. They are not nope. a sponsor, just being clear. Uh, if Derby doesn't work for you, there are a lot of other ones. There's tons of options. Yes. There's there are resources for anyone at any level in any area. Just just go out there and find them. We we will help you find anything. That's why we're we're talking about Derby. That's what works for Adam. Uh he really likes it. Um, you know, just my be- wife did a bunch of fitness challenges. She went on Pinterest and found all of these different things. One of them was a squat challenge. Really weird. Okay. So it's not like squat bar in the, in the gym. It's literally just sitting there physically squatting over and over and over and over. And you're doing like deep squats. So you're, you're legit pressing, working your legs, your knees, everything. Okay. That just hurts my knee thinking right? about it. Okay. She's, she's doing these like 30, 30 day challenges Man, like my wife's butt looked so good at it. <laughs> but it, you know, like it was that she did push up challenges. She did, uh, I think she did a burpee challenge, which I hate burpees. Like they suck. You know, they're they're terrible. I don't I like know, burping. It, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, 
do what do what you feel comfortable doing. So this works for me, but it may not work for you. But I would give it a chance if yeah. you're if you are because if there you, is tons in there. If so. you don't have anywhere to start, start there. Yeah, because it works. And so again, this isn't an ad for that. It's not anything like that. This is just us having been down that road a little bit longer, hoping to impart some of our hard earned uh, learning so that it's a little bit easier for you. Yeah. So I hope you come along for the ride as we are keeping you guys up to date on our progress. Hopefully we have progress. Um, that's the goal. And we're really, we're really taking this and, 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 really controlling it. But before I move into the next thing that I wanted to talk about, Joe, I have a gift for you. Okay. okay. And I don't know where you're going to go, what you're going to do. I, I sent you a link for some gym membership uh, discount stuff that, you know, I, I had access to, but I decided that I would pick us up something to make sure we had something in order to hold our phones and uh-huh. listen to maybe go over a Derby workout program or whatever workout program you want and, and listen to your music or watch your favorite episode. But this attaches to your arm. This is Tribe Fitness from Amazon. No, we're not an affiliate. No, we don't benefit at all. But these were really cool wristbands. And they, they just, they're armbands. They go up all the way up to your bicep if you want. And, and they're, they're water resistant. But if you sweat a lot, you need to wash it because it will reek. And so, and these things, honestly, I mean, I obviously I haven't tried one like this before, but on my stationary bike, it's actually got the uh, phone holder so I can put the phone up so I can watch, yeah. you know, podcasts. I can watch videos when I'm doing that. It helps the time to go by faster on my road bike. Uh, I've got a little pouch uh, that holds my phone. So again, I can be listening to stuff or playing Pokemon Go. Uh, if you go over a certain speed limit on your, or a certain speed on your uh, road bike, it actually thinks you're in a car. So you got to manage that speed a little bit. Um, I would be like, I'm a car, I'm a car. <laughs> <laughs> I have gotten up to 40 miles an hour, over 40 miles an hour. I think it was 43 miles an hour on my road bike. Every single time I get a bike, it gets stolen. Like I just, I don't buy bikes because they get stolen that I, I don't, I don't live in terrible areas. Like <laughs> I just, I had a really nice apartment where I had bikes hanging on the balcony that, that were hanging from the rafters and my bike left. My wife's didn't, my didn't, mine did. But yeah, they, these things are great. <laughs> Have, Cause this, like I said earlier, make it fun, make it entertaining, make it, it's not just exercise. This is an activity. Yeah. And so these are actually really cool. This is, this is awesome because <laughs> now any activity I do, you have, I have this so I can have, You're like, let me get my handy dandy armband. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, make it fun, make it enjoyable. You know, that's what makes exercise doable and you will feel better. You will be healthier. It's not about being skinny. It is about being healthy. Yep. You know, the, and, and here's the problem. So this is why I know we're way over time, but I do want to say, so talking to my doctors, one of the reasons why it was so important to find why I am overweight, obviously I'm doing right health or food wise. I'm exercising. I could do more, but I'm exercising, uh, is because the way that the fat compresses the organs in the center of the body, specifically with the way that the, w- the fat is distributed in my body, where it's all on the central core, mm-hmm. um, it compresses all of the organs. So it compresses my heart. It compresses my lungs. Uh, all those things, it causes legitimate health problems or potential health problems. Not being able to breathe as well. The heart having to do more effort. It's not about being skinny. It is about health. And so losing these extra pounds for me is about putting less pressure on my internal organs. And thereby I'm going to be able to live longer. (laughs) It's not about skinny. It's about healthy. Now I've got good blood pressure. I've got good cholesterol. Medication is helping those. Um, But as much as those help, I've still got a lot of that pressure on my midsection. And so losing the weight is what's going to help make me healthy and be able to live longer. So for me, skinny, just because of my body structure, is healthy. Yeah. 
but not everybody is the same way. You, Adam, will never be as skinny as I was in my prime. It's just you have a large body structure. I know what my like oper- like my ideal weight is, but I haven't seen it in uh, a long time. <laughs> and so <laughs> it, years. <laughs> it is about being healthy. Yeah. And that's the goal. That's the key. And that's the journey that we're on is not necessarily skinny. No. It's about healthy. healthy. Yep. I, um, I'm going to shift gears. Okay. I don't really have a good transition for this. Other than the fact that sometimes if you don't deodorize before you go to the gym, you might stink. Not as bad as 19,000 cattle on <laughs> a cargo ship in Cape Town, South Africa. So what happened is basically on the way from Brazil is where these ranchers, probably not ranchers, but you know, made for a good seafaring tale. Um, these, uh, this cargo ship is transporting 19,000 cows uh, across to Iraq. And I don't know why Iraq, but okay, that's great. You know, it's going there. Someone royal there is probably it. Mm -hmm. Someone very, very wealthy. Once 19,000 cows, okay? This is not the first time that they've done this. Um, They also have um, the, uh, they did some sheep and goats and and that kind of stuff and some more cows, uh, kind of a mixed cattle uh, cargo ship. But they keep having to go south because of all the stuff going on in the, uh, with with uh, the Houthis and attacking the ships, so they're not they're not taking the other route to get there. They're they're going around uh, the the southern point of Africa. Mm-hmm. So that being said, it stops there for a resupply of food for the cattle, and it stopped there for you know it's, it's a couple days to resupply this ship, and in the process of that stunk up the entire town of Cape Town entire. Like that's a big city for it to be. Yeah. So here we have a, a meat processing plant that used to be in Draper. And we used to call it the Draper vapor when the winds changed because it was absolutely disgusting. And it wasn't always because of like, you know, the, the carcasses of animals. It was because it was a processing plant. So even just the cattle car itself, or you drive by a dairy farm. That is terrible. Um, <clears throat> all of those are normal places that smell absolutely atrocious. Well, you wouldn't think Cape Town as one of those places, but this cargo ship caused that much of a stink. Um, <clears throat> and so they uh, basically, like, the city officials checked, like, sewage facilities for leaks. They didn't know that it was coming from this ship originally. They were just like, why is it so terrible? <laughs> but so they finally zeroed in on, they find this, uh, this cargo ship and they inspect it. And what they noticed is that the way that they were being handled and that, like these cattle were forced to basically stand and lay down and sleep in their own feces. And like the conditions for them to be transported, there's already like the, what is the, uh, prevention of cruelty to animals basically, or the PCA, um, when at like is, is protesting against this because of the fact that it's so bad. Like yeah. they've, they've said, do not transport livestock across the ocean. No. Um, we, we know that back in the 17, 1800s, there's a famous <laughs> pirate who tried it. And the people that I can't remember the pirate's name, um, it, horrible histories did one of their cartoon episodes on it, but, uh, <coughs> it was so bad. The cows yeah. were so sick yep. that the officials that came to arrest the pirates just left because they weren't <laughs> having anything to do with it. So they, they found some dead and diseased ones. Um, eight cows were humanely euthanized. Um, they didn't say how many they found dead. Um, but, but, you know, I mean, thinking about like the conditions that they have to live in, um, you, I, I think their focus as they're transporting this to make sure that they're fed. But other than that, like you're 
and all the elements in the heat in these boxes in these cattle carts that are that are you know massive stack cows on top of cows on top of oh, cows i mean usually some of those are four and five you know cow height tall so you're talking each cattle car is you know hundreds of cows and you know i know the cattle ranchers are like could you just drop them off in my yard, please? Because I'll take a you know a, a, a good fifty, you know. But oh, the idea so cool. is is that you know this is two and a half weeks on board of of this just to get to Cape Town, and they still have to travel all the way around to Iraq, and so they still have a ways to go. Um, and they're yeah they're they're really trying to um, trying to to fix this. The S S P C A ha- has really put up a big fight trying to stop this to make it so that it's just illegal for them to transport like this. But then you have countries like Brazil who are like, neat. I'm glad you have a law. I don't care. (laughs) And they're going to do their thing. So, you know, you're going to run into this. The only, the only thing that you would probably run into is to say like Cape town would say, no, you can't stop here. So, you know, in the efforts to try to reduce that, you know, they're, they're going to stop that. But then you're going to have the other side of that that says, no, if it means that animals stay alive, you need to let them stop. Right. Your town is going to stink, but you need to let them stop. So it's it's this really the vicious battle. And at the end of the day, it's like, just stop transporting them. Like, get these cattle, get, get a few cattle there and start building that cattle there instead of it being right. like, why do you need 19,000 cows shipped over to Iraq? Like, Wow. What is the point of this? So they're doing a lot of work. They're trying to do it. Um, the last one that actually better conditions, they were fed, they were taken care of, was uh, the 16,000 cattle and sheep um, is, is what went over to the Middle East. Uh, and But basically, uh, I think it, it actually ended up being, it returned to Australia. It came from Australia. So <clears throat> it was stranded at sea for nearly a month Oh. due to the Houthi attacks. So wow. they they had to turn around and go back. So that that being said, like they they literally have to, you know, this is this is a normal practice, but it's something that like you have decent conditions even having them stranded there for a month, they they took better care than this 19,000 cows on this cargo ship. So oh. You know, I, 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 more than anything, this story was just kind of gross. And I was like, yeah, it's a total like shift in direction from what we're talking about today. Uh, being that, you know, my diet's going to consist of no beef. So <laughs> cattle, I don't care. <laughs> yeah, that, that's one where PETA should get involved. I, that's, I mean, I, I'm not a huge fan of PETA. I think some of their methods are uh, a little out there. Yeah. Uh, in principle, yes. Yeah. People should be treating animals ethically. That's there's no question there. Don't try to lay down in front of a cargo ship. It doesn't work. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's that's wild. I cannot even imagine. That's there. There are so many better ways. Yeah. So many better ways to do that. So many better. I can't even say that enough. So many better ways. <clears throat> wow. Well, we've reached the end of our show. Thankfully. <laughs> Um, I want to reiterate that, uh, be consistent, have a structure and be patient. You are freaking awesome. And, uh, life is too short. So keep laughing, keep learning. And remember, idiots have way more fun. Check your shoes. 